The two pieces of the counterweight carrier may be unloaded with the derrick mast and can be assembled without an auxiliary crane. This is the carrier extension cylinder connecting the counterweight carrier to the crane. It is pinned to the lower wheeled carrier. After having the carrier loaded with counterweights, the crane is moved close enough to the carrier so that the hydraulic hoses can be connected. The best method is to travel the crane as close as possible to the counterweight carrier, attach the hydraulic hoses so that the height of the carrier can be adjusted with the hydraulic cylinders to ease and ensure proper alignment with the crane. Connect panel X25 so that the counterweight carrier can be controlled. Activate the jack-up cylinders of the counterweight carrier. With proper alignment, the connection to the crane is smooth. Finally, the carrier suspension straps, which connect the carrier with the derrick mast, are pinned together. Now turn off the rigging mode for regular crane operation. A check of the carrier extension cylinder is performed. The radius of the counterweight carrier can be adjusted hydraulically with the touch of a button in the cab from 37 feet to 49 feet. It can be operated at any position within this range. The load chart on the crane as well as the LMI is automatically adjusted to the counterweight carrier's position. To make significant direction changes, such as trailing counterweight to a swing mode, the carrier needs to be lifted with the jacking system, so the wheel sets can be turned into the new direction. Three cameras allow the operator to get a view of the important components of the crane. Here he can control the position of the wheel sets. This camera is giving the operator a view of the main hoists. And this is a view of the derrick winch.